Welcome back to the Drum Rundown. We are here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Brooklyn Bowl, and I'm here with Jaden Bean of Dirty Honey. What is going on, man? What's up, everyone? How you doing? That's Thanks good, for having dude. me here. Of course. Yeah, uh, I feel like I've just been passing you over the last couple of years because <laughs> you are always opening for some band that I'm yeah. going to see, and it's been awesome to see you guys rising so fast. And oh, thank you, man. Getting to play some awesome shows with some awesome Appreciate bands. That. And I'm happy to see you here in Nashville tonight playing Absolutely. this awesome kit. How's tour been, man? It's been great. You know, it's been a long one these last couple months. We've had, you know, some ups and downs with uh, our buses and trailers, all all the trials of the road that come. You know, you never know what's going to happen. So other than that, the shows have been pretty awesome. You know, we, we're we having awesome crowds. We're playing the new record or at least a lot of songs from the new record. And we're, we're receiving a lot of good, positive feedback from it, too. Cool, you know, man. we're seeing it happen as the shows go on. Because uh, the record released about a week and a half into the tour, so those first few shows we were kind of still playing songs that people hadn't heard yet. Yeah, you right. know, so it was cool seeing people's reactions when they hadn't heard it, and then seeing all of it change when the when the album came out. So oh, very cool. Yeah, it's been a blast though. We've had a busy year for sure. Yeah, great. You know? well, I'm glad to uh, have you be the last rundown of this year. Oh so, yes, yeah, happy to do it, man. Let's Appreciate talk about this Champagne Sparkle Gretsch kit, man. It's a uh, yeah, it's it's, beautiful. It's I love this finish. Always. Actually, silver glass. Silver glass. Yeah, it, I think it kind of took over the Champagne Sparkle for Gretsch because they don't really do a Champagne Sparkle anymore. The Champagne color itself is actually really hard to find nowadays. You kind of have to buy a, a vintage kit, or maybe Gretsch would you know, make you a, a champagne yeah, right? custom, but I saw this this uh, color and I kind of was just like, it's like a lighter gold sparkle to me. The right. gold sparkle is kind of a little more orange. And uh, this this just kind of, to me, feels more like a gold sparkle, even though the, the technical color is a silver glass. Silver glass, I mean, yeah. that's... That's banging. Yeah. It's a cool, so cool it's, name. It's a badass for sure. Run me uh, the sizes of uh, the Toms. You know, I got a 12 by 8. Okay. Um, this is 16 by 16 and 14 by 14. Um, I obviously do a little bit of a, a backwards floor tom setup. Yeah. That's on purpose. Um, I like to have the bigger drum as my main floor tom. I don't know. I just like if I have to ride on a floor tom, I like having a little more low end gushiness. Yeah, because most of the time it's like a 16 and then there's like an 18 yeah. out there. What got you to the smaller one on the outside? You know, I actually just don't like 18s as much yeah. as everyone's always like, oh, big drums, they sound better. And I just don't necessarily agree with that. You know, I, I kind of like, even with kick drums, a lot of people love 24s or 26s for rock. And this is a 22 by 16. And in my experience, depending on how you tune it and depending on the dampening, it obviously changes the, the amount of low end you get. But I usually get more low end from like a 22 by 16 than a 24 okay. by 16 or a 24 by 14. Those end up having a lot of attack and a lot of click and then a lot of room for air to move, but it doesn't push the low end in the same way. I don't know. To I me, agree. Just, yeah, I agree. I think that you can get a little bit more punch, especially like you said, if you're dampening it or how yeah. you tune it. Yeah, same with like the the toms. I, I'm a big punch guy, if if that's the word you like. I, I like to have a lot of attack and a lot of tone, and I'm not a huge sustain guy. So I dampen my drums a lot. Like if you look inside my my toms, I don't know if the cameras up here can see, but I got these custom made, and each one of them has the built-in mm -hmm. little button dampener. I got the felt strip on the on the front head in there, but I also put cotton balls inside yeah. the drums, and then I use the O-rings as well. I, I just started using the O-rings actually, just because I didn't want to use moon gels anymore, and I still like to dampen the top head a little bit. Yeah, I've kind of got away from the moon gels uh, as yeah. of late as well. I think you got the Richie ring situation. Mm -hmm. I see the snare weight on the snare. Yep, snare um, weight. I still do use a couple moon gels. Just I like I like dry sound. I just like things to have the attack and the tone and then disappear. You're getting that like 70s classic dead kit sound. Yeah, yeah. Which is that's... really, really cool, especially playing it with resonant heads and yeah. and you're getting it done with a, a clear head. Absolutely. So you're getting that sound out of Emperor Clears. Yeah. By Emperor Clear. Well, so I kind of always played Emperor Clears from when I was a kid, went through the phases of doing the coated heads, 
tried the Emperor Vintage Coated, and those are cool too, but I, I just feel like I get a little warmer tone and a little more gushiness out of the clear heads. The, the coated heads to me send, tend to be a little more papery, mm -hmm. if, if that's a word that makes sense to you. It's just, I like to, I don't know, I just, I'm a big, a big yeah, lover of attack. that, yeah, the attack, attack and just tone for a second and then, and then it's gone, you yeah. know, like, I kind of like it to sound how it would sound as if you had just mixed it and put all your gates on and compressed and EQ'd things. I like kind of to like, like it to sound like that right off the gate. Well, that's cool because you're getting it done at the drum level instead of fixing it yeah, down yeah. the signal chain and putting gates and trying to EQ the hell out Yeah, of it. I think my front of house guys usually really like the way I do it. And the same with cymbals, <laughs> like cymbals, I use the thinnest, like all my cymbals are super, super thin and, and decay really quick. I just, I just don't think that it's necessary to have drums resonating constantly on stage. Yeah. And that's kind of what happens when you have open, open tone drums, is especially if you're using in ears or 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 even a, a wedge mix, you know, you're having to use a lot of gates to cut out all the overtones that are happening all the time, and then those gates, you know, are going to be reacting differently based off what type of player you are. And I I like to use a lot of dynamics, so I try not to use too much of a gate and kind of do it all here first so yeah. that I can get the stuff happening that I want to happen articulation wise and stuff. So talk to me about these internal dampeners and how you kind of got to that design. Well, this was really more of a, of a thought process of using this as a studio and a live kit. And these dampeners are really more beneficial for probably studio necessarily than live. Um, because they are pretty sensitive. Like once you, yeah. once you touch it down even a little bit, that resonant head it's really gone. chokes up. Yeah. So it's it's a specific sound that I just wanted to have the option for. And also the the kick drum felt strip is always on. I just like to have that. I don't use a ton of dampening in the kick drum, but I do have like a little a little blanket, or I guess it was like a sheet that we'd use to cover this. It's just something yeah. to put down there. But for the most part kick drum's fairly open and and uh, I don't really use the Tom ones live. I only use them in the studio for okay. a specific sound. Just to even get rid of even more overtone. You're yeah, a or, enemy. Yeah, yeah, well that or you know, the, I use like some tape on the bottom too. I'll take the tape off or I'll take the cotton balls out and just use a dampener. You know, there's just, I just wanted the variety of the different sounds I could get. Yeah, and we were joking before, if we had our way, we would just be like studio rats. Yeah, so yeah. Of yeah dude, just, just wearing clean. sweatpants and chilling and in the just studio. Just chasing man. tones. Yeah, yeah. I love that stuff, man. I love being in the studio and having a, a, a variety of tones I can give people. You know, I, I, I'm into production and, and kind of mixing drums myself as well. It's just, I like that stuff. Yeah. Well, like you said, you're uh, like a front of house guy's dream. Cause yeah, you're, you're trying to get it yeah. done at the kit level. Yeah, which I think yeah, is, is appreciated. And I think that helps in the in the studio too, is knowing the sound you want as the finished product first. Because then, you know, a big part of the studio life is knowing how to tune drums and and get the sound you want, and not have to do it all on the back end with production, yeah. with sound replacing and gates and chopping toms and doing all this stuff. You know, it can kind of you can get a really good sound and just have the, the takes as they are and not have to do as much. Yeah, well you're, and you're also playing in a genre that is kind of more of right. a traditional classic rock sound. Right. So, right. You know, right. it's all studio stuff. And fix it in the box. The style of music also lends itself to the deader, drier right. drums. Which know? I'm into because that's kind of the sound I've been chasing the yeah. last couple of years. Yeah. I don't know. It's a you vibe. Know, it's, it's really actually coming more and more popular even in pop music. You look at I mean, a lot of the, any sessions that I do at home, just out of my, my studio, majority of sounds, they want like a dry, a really dry snare, yeah. you know, or a, a kind of a thwoppy, thuddy, warm kick. And it's, it's usually sampled with claps and other electronic drum yeah. sounds. So you're like kind of trying to find a snare sound that just sneaks in the mix to all the other stuff. So, you know, knowing how to tune drums and apply the dampening in the correct way is a skill too. You know, some guys will look at 
the dampening stuff as a lack of ability to to be right, able to tune right. drums. Like a crutch or something. Yeah, but it's actually a skill as well. And if you've ever been in the studio and, you know, even if you're the most magnificent drum tuner or you have a drum dial and you're making sure all the pressures are different, this is the thing that's going to tell yeah. you what's right. So I try to just, you know, guide by that and not try to judge too much about what people think in terms of, you know, how drums should be tuned or what, whatever. Well, I think if you put an intentionality piece on it on the front end like you are, then there's already right. artists, like artistry in yeah. the tone, right? Yeah. It's like there's an intentionality in it. Exactly. It's your through. sound, you know? A, yeah. a lot of drummers get stuck in trying to recreate past sounds or like they really like this guy's drum sound and so they're all, you know, kind of gearing all their efforts around playing like that guy and sounding like that guy with their drums, yeah. or they see a guy with a bunch of toms, and they're like, oh, I want to sound like that, and the only way to sound like that is to have all those toms. You know what I wish we heard more of is like triplets on like a 26 inch kick yeah. in classic rock. I don't think there's enough of that happening. Yeah. yeah. I, think, I don't know who like started that, but that's uh, a really cool tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so let's talk Man. about the cymbals, because that is a, another intentional choice. We have Istanbul's, and yep. you're playing super thin, yeah. kind of small. Cymbals. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people also comment on this guy over here, which is it's only cool. a 16 inch, and it's the same mentality as the drums. You know, cymbals are usually the most annoying thing to everyone else on the planet, other than drummers. Right. So if you're worried about playing big cymbals that are nice and washy and have all these, you know, overtones that you love, nobody else cares for the most part. Your singer hates it, actually. Because yep. <laughs> <laughs> these cymbals are directly in line with his vocal mic, and it's all going into it and into his ears. It's right there. He knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. So having things that get out of the way sure. fast is important for a good live mix. Now, studio is a completely different story. You know, there's much more sensitivity in the studio that you can do. And when you're playing live and you're smashing cymbals, and have a stick height that's coming up here, which you're not doing in the studio usually, those cymbals are gonna be loud no matter what you do. So the quicker they decay, the better, in my opinion. Yeah. So 16 is a very, like it's quick. It's, it's cool. It's gone pretty quick yeah. and. You can hear all the articulation with every stroke, so if I, change a cymbal pattern from going from eighth notes and I want to stay on that same cymbal but only go to quarter notes to create a different effect, Yeah, you can hear the articulation and still have it decay and not mess up people's mix. And it's super dry. It's That's super very, dry. Very, very dry super cymbal. dry. And what is that one for the folks back That's home? That's the hammer, the Istanbul Mehmet. I'm a Istanbul Mehmet artist and that one I, I played and and I told my a and I was like, dude, that's freaking one of the dopest symbols I've heard and, sick. and he's like take it he's just like somewhere in between like a china for the it's like got pyro a, yeah it's got a gongy thing to it and then it's it. kind of got a yeah. stack yeah thing a little happening. trashy yeah, gongy, trashy thing, gongy and thing and it explodes Fun. good and it disappears and then you know this is a very <laughs> crash yeah. you know it's it's right up the middle I like the traditional stuff because it's also got a little bit of that kind of like 60s, 70s era, era feel of like those 60s Zildjian A's kind of vibe, mm -hmm. you know, hats. Um, this one I got a little bit thicker. I cracked my last one because I was, <laughs> it's a little, it was a little too thin for a yeah. ride cymbal, you know, I was, I was bashing it probably a little too hard, but. Because you're crashing on there a little bit as well. Yeah, yeah. I do, I do utilize the ride as, as a crash f a fair amount, like. I'm I'm a kind of like an accent guy with the symbols and the the wash on this same thing. It's got a it's got a definition to it that you can hear all the strokes and the wash is a pretty quick decay. Yeah. You know, and then I got a little stack over here which is just a broken 19-inch uh, traditional exactly like this one, my previous one that I cracked. All right, there it is. <laughs> and then, yeah, just you know keeping it in the family and yeah. then I, I throw this little. Uh, x-ray random on top of it and it's just another trashy sound we got one song that i used this on the record as like an offbeat thing mm -hmm. 
to kind of like just give a different sound than the hi-hat because the, the verse is like it's got that thing and then the chorus goes just gives it a yeah, different come on. a different Try vibe not a different, shake your ass to that. That's different fun. energy you know right. so just a every everything is all about attack and tone pretty much for me um and getting out of the way yeah and that you snare know? is cracking man oh yeah it's very very yeah. cool what do we got yeah this is a one the one that i built with the kit it's just a five and a half by 14 usa custom shallower than i would think for you you know that's the it's again i'm i'm doing the things yeah, that people man. don't expect you know i got little symbols i got a shallow snare drum but again a bigger snare drum i have i have a a six and a half by 14 as a as a backup but i get so much tone out of out of this this drum and it feels good i i've played you know six and a half by 14s a, a million times but Again, just the way that drums rebound and and the articulation that I can get out of them, I just like that that depth. And you've it's got pretty, the head pretty tight. Yeah, I got You're it. Going pretty cracky. Pretty cracked, yeah. Because um, I I do I do a lot of diddle type rudiments, and it's hard to do diddle rudiments yeah. on drums that are a little loose. I mean, I still do them even on floor toms and stuff, which is you know a pretty loose drum, but. With the snare, I, I just, I do a lot of ghost notes when I play. I, yeah. I use a lot of drag stuff and. Playing with all the rebound a lot. Yeah, I, I was, you know, a technique guy. I grew up playing in big bands and doing, doing the jazz thing and listening to classic rock. And those were my two things. And then funk music came in and I was just like all about funk for yeah. seven years. Because it seems like the approach of the <laughs> gear that you're going with is more in the funk lane yeah. than it is the yeah. classic rock stuff because yeah. you have taken a huge left turn from the traditional classic rock big drum thing. right right which was i consider that like the 80s area of classic rock but i was more in like the 60s and 70s this was what i like to listen to which was coming from a lot of the sounds came from like that james brown type mm -hmm. of like they would use a really high pitched snare if you listen to like early doobie brothers for instance with john hartman on drums He's practically got the exact same sound as if, if you pulled off everything off that record and just played the drums, you'd be like, is this a James Brown track right, right now? Like, snare cranked super high and, and toms were even higher. You, he's got some tom fills on there. It's like, you're yeah. like, damn, this guy doesn't care about big drums at all. Yeah. And I think that the 80s is when everyone was like, oh, let's, let's have a 19 inch deep rack tom. For, yeah. for that sustain well, that I are, hate. Yeah, <laughs> right. But I think some of the arena stuff yeah. was informing that, right? Because it's like yeah. you're a little speck in this giant thing yeah. and you're, everybody's trying to be yeah. big and yeah. everything's neon. Yeah, and I don't know what the sound systems were like back then either, you know, like in terms of how much low end they could push and how much right. volume they could actually push. So maybe you needed that that extra depth for the extra air to move and, and get the mics to do their thing. But nowadays I think... Th you know, in, in my experience playing live and, you know, feeling the reaction of drums with different sy systems, you know, I don't think you need that. Yeah. And I mean, you're playing to the modern front of house system because yeah. you're being aware yeah. of the cymbals being into the vocal mics. Absolutely. See a lot of people playing with like little plexi shields and stuff yeah. like that to kind of cut yeah. that out. And you're taking care of it with the sizes and stuff. Yeah. And I do it. not want to play with a plexi shield. So that's my, yeah, right. that's my, my uh, way to get away from that is no I will, sneeze guard for you. I will sacrifice my taste in drummery cymbals for not having to play with a plexi shield. Yeah. Now, yeah, the last thing that I see that's kind of interesting um, is a butt thumper, but it's not the Porter and Davies. Yeah. It's a Pearl yeah, thumper. Yeah, yeah. We'll you know, talk about it. The Porter and Davies one is an amazing one, but I wanted one that I could take around a little bit easier than having to carry my throne around everywhere. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're playing a festival or something and you have a backline kit and just some random throne. This one is like, I don't even know if Pearl makes these anymore. Because this was very hard to find. This is the first one I've seen in yeah. human life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like I was like scouring eBay and Reverb and all these places trying to figure out where to get one because they sell. It's like a partnership, I think, with Butt Kicker, which is a 
they make it for gaming too. It's like a it's like a screw on. You can screw it onto like your gaming chair. Right. Um, and they partnered with with Pearl, I believe, and built like the amp system. It's got you know its own amp system built in with the cabling, and it's just a it's literally just a clamp clamps onto the throne. All right. And it's got like a like a little EQ. I don't know if you'll be able to see it for the video, but it's got like a little low pass oh, filter on nice. here, so you can you can cut where you want in terms of low end, get a little more of a mid-range thump, depending on what stage you're on. If you already got a stage, it's got a lot of low end in it. Right. Maybe you want something that feels just a little more tacky. And it's got the volume knob, and then I I mix it all in in a little mixer here. So I actually have my in-ear mix coming in here too. Okay. So I can even get my uh, toms in the, in the thumper as well. Nice. So I'm feeling a little bit of energy and movement when I'm hitting the toms as cool. well, so not just not just full kick to yeah. the thumper. A little bit of bass in there too. All right. You know, I just kind of like mix my in ears based on how much I want in there, and it's pretty. That's rad. cool. That's the first yeah. time I've seen a sub mix going into the thumper. Yeah, because I I don't have a wedge on stage or a, a sub back here because I also sing a lot with Dirty Honey. I sing a, all the backgrounds, so I'm I got a vocal mic normally right here that, as you know adding a vocal mic yeah, chaos. right here is yeah. just like constant noise, right? So add a monitor that I have blaring, because I wasn't on in-ears at that time. This is the first tour that I've been on in-ears. So you have a monitor and a sub behind also blasting into your thing. It's just, it was just a crazy yeah. situation. So. And I love that you're keeping it in the theme of uh, getting that dry yeah. attack mix, <laughs> Get, even in the, even it, in the yeah, thumper. Yeah, dude, I mean, it's, it's all for my own enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> and what are your in-ears? Uh, I use a West Tone. Okay. I got the, uh, I can't remember which model it is. It's got the five drivers and I got the one that's got a sub woofer in it. It's got two low end drivers on top of that and okay. then a mid and a tweeter. All right. So it's my in ears are geared for low end. Yeah. Obviously, as as a drummer, the biggest thing you lose once you put in in ears is you lose all your low end. Mm -hmm. And it, that's kind of what what the thumper was for was actually because I I was on in ears and I was pushing my my kick too hard. I was just like hurting myself by hitting the kick way too hard. Right. Because I wasn't getting. You're not feeling the air moving. That's all drums was just air and vibration. Well, it's going the opposite direction too. Yeah. So you're just killing exactly. your singer. Exactly. So I got the thumper when I moved to the ears and it kind of negated having to feel like I needed to put so much in the kick cuz now I'm now I'm feeling the vibration. I'm feeling the air moving. It really mm -hmm. helped a lot. Very cool. You know. And uh, what sticks do you got? Vic Firth, Vic Firth artist. I use the Extreme 5As uh, long. I I just like longer sticks. Yeah. I, I was using the X55As for a little bit for just a little more weight, but I keep going back to this thickness of the of the 5A. It just feels better in my hand. I think I was like trying to compensate with not having to play as hard by getting a little bigger stick, but then I listened back to like recording stuff. It doesn't sound any different if I'm playing an X55A or an yeah. Extreme 5A, and this I play better with this stick, so. Cool. Yeah, it's That's all about the run. feel, and I think your cymbals are probably happy you're not getting bashed with a heavier <laughs> right, stick, right? Right, right. And you get a little a little nicer tone, too, with yeah. a lighter stick. Cool. Especially well, like you said, you're a finesse player. Mm -hmm. You're doing a little bit yeah. more in the wrist, so yeah. not just like a ham-fisted meat and potatoes guy. Yeah, although I love doing a little spat boom bap a doom you know? Pat boom meet, Debbie meet, boom dude, let's meet, go. Meet, this meet whole, this film, whole dude. city was built on that uh, film, man. Bouge la doo Yeah, you know? man, come on, let's <laughs> That's go. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, what do you got for kick pedal down there? I used 5000. Yeah, dude. The old DW5000, always been my go-to. Um, tried the nine, I've tried the four, I've tried the three. Isn't it funny how we always go back to the five? And, yeah, why do they even make anything else? You know? know. That's the question. I play the heelist five, which is weird. Oh, really? It's got the little he no heel plate on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the what five. What difference does that end up making for you in terms of like the the reaction you're getting off the pedal. The interviewer becomes the interviewee. Yeah, well, um, I'm just interested, you know? I like it's it like... because I feel like it gives me a little bit more connection to the floor. Okay. Um, I also was bruising the hell out of my heel, uh, just kind of like smashing stuff. And right, it was, right. It was, honestly, dude, it was like 
it cost a little less and I saw yeah. it and I was like, that's wild. It doesn't have a heel plate. What is it? Yeah. So I tried it out. I auditioned it and I was like, I love this thing. Is the weight of it a little heavier or lighter? It's, I think it's the same. The same? Yeah, okay. it feels the same. It's kind of the same any 5,000 out of the box. I don't really change any of the tension and right. it just goes. The same with me. Yeah. I, I changed the beater. I use the, the little circle felt beaters because mm -hmm. I like the weight of those better than the, yeah. than the plastic one with the little felt part on it. I've been playing with beaters, like little skate wheels and stuff yeah. and like some fun things. Yeah, I like to use one around. of those little big old big old felt ones for the yep. studio too. Get a nice little gushy tone. Yeah, more in that dead mm -hmm. yeah, 70s thing. That's what people want. Like, hey man, give the people what they want. The 70s are in as far as drum tones. Remember that. Yeah, <laughs> and you guys are in. Yeah. It sounds awesome. You guys are yeah, doing man. great. Congrats yeah. Congrats on the new record. Appreciate I'm glad it. everybody's responding to it well. Yeah, yeah, it's been cool to hear what people are saying and all the reviews and stuff. We've been getting a lot of good feedback. Very cool, man. Yeah. Well, the intentionality is becoming the artistry. Yeah. And I love that for you. Yeah. It's very cool. As it should be. Thanks for letting us sit down with you and uh, run around man. this awesome kit today, man. Thank you. All Thanks right. for having me. Thanks for having me over We there. have been here with Jaden Bean of Dirty Honey. This has been the Drum Rundown. We will see you all on the next one. Thank you.